Hello, my friends. How you doing today? I am doing well, and I got I got some stuff. I got some stuff that I have to unbox. It's been a long day. It's been a long day, and I and I got some stuff and some stories to go with the stuff. So I'm gonna unbox it, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah. Um, first thing I got here, I did open up. So I will show you. I, I, I if, listen. If I open things up ahead of time, I, I'm always honest with you guys. I opened up ahead of time. Uh, it's because this came in during the weekend. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to record until Monday. There was some stuff in here that I wanted to watch, and I was like, well, maybe I can open it up, do a little review, watch watch the movie, and do a little review on it, and um, and uh, you guys can give me your feedback on it. Now, um, there's two movies in here. I'm gonna start with the first. I'm gonna start with the one that I watched. Okay, so I uh, was excited because I love me some Nightmare on Elm Street documentaries I, I like i like documentaries in general like if, it, if, if it's a documentary i'll pretty much watch a documentary on anything that's going on and um i saw um it wasn't durant's was it was not wasn't durant cinema it was uh uh born born to be rad born to be rad had was going through his his nightmare on elm street collections because everybody's all excited let, let me let me let me throw this out there at you uh everybody's excited about getting this nightmare on elm street on 4k and i gotta tell you i'm not excited i'm i'm totally not excited about it. i i have i am having no excitement whatsoever now am i gonna buy it when it's released i'm probably gonna buy it just because i'm a completist and a collector and i'm gonna i'm gonna probably buy it but i really was really hoping for a like a halloween box set of nightmare on street or a like a, a friday the 13th box set or a phantasm box or a hellraiser box set of it so what what are you gonna do to us what, what do you what do you got now i don't even know who owns nightmare on elm street anymore i know back in the day it was lion's gate i think it was lion's gate wasn't it new lion cinemas new lion cinemas owned the uh original uh nightmare on elm street um if i remember correctly and now we're getting a what i what i'm seeing everywhere is just a 4k of the first movie I want all the rest. Now, number three was my favorite of all, all, all of the, the Freddy franchise. So why why am I not getting a Nightmare on Elm Street part three? That's 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 the best way. Every listen, there ain't nobody here that's sitting down watching this channel that cannot say that part three is not the best one of the whole entire franchise franchise. Now, number one was great, okay, because that, that introduces you to the character. Uh number two, whoa. Okay, so I can say is whoa. It's like number two was just number one with a male scream queen okay that that's 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 what it was and then number three was just unbelievable i mean it, it gave you characters that you cared about there was killings that would have this is freddie was funny he was he was he was its makeup was a hundred times better than it was in any of the other uh a nightmare on street series uh you you got more close-ups of freddie you got more, you got to see freddie a little bit more he he was just more charismatic in part three and then everything after that he was he was even bigger you know he, he became the guy you know what i mean part one you saw shadows part two you saw shadows with a little bit of light or whatever and then um part three is when you actually get to really meet freddy that's the way i feel i think i think is three the magic number is that, is that what's going on because we had um we had with um Jason, uh, not Jason, uh, with with Michael Ma. Yeah, no, it was Jason. It was Jason? We had uh part one. We had part two, which part one was the the mother. Uh, part two was Baghead, and part three was the hockey mask. So so is is in horror and horror in the horror franchise of of best horror movies is number three the magic number for for to to introduce the character to people because that's what I'm getting out of that so far because I got to tell you I I personally think that um uh. Friday the Thirteenth Part Three was uh, more interesting than, than uh, one and two. We had we had Baghead and we had we had uh, uh, the mother. That wasn't even him. That was. Oh, am I giving away something right here? Listen, any you Scream fans, I just helped you out there. Okay, so if there's ever any trivia questions, okay, as far as who the killer was in Friday the Thirteenth Part One, it was not. It was not uh, Jason. It, it was Jason's mother, Pamela Voorhees. Okay, so so I'm giving you the the scream the scream version of helping you out in case you're being murdered by by Ghostface. Okay, and then Part Two was Bagface. Uh, um, 
Jason. So he still didn't get the hockey mask. But then part three, here comes the hockey mask. Same thing with Freddy. Freddy was in the shadows in part one. And in part two, he was still kind of in the shadows with a couple little lighted things there when he's like, you have all my children now. That that type thing or whatever. But it's still, when, when three came, three was like, that was it. I, I remember seeing three in the theater. I remember that's when I was sold on Freddy. It wasn't one that did it. It wasn't two that did it. It was three. And I'm pretty sure that's it was the same thing with Friday 13. Now, let me think about Halloween. Halloween three, <laughs> Halloween three is the season of the witch. Everybody seems to hate that. I love it. <laughs> I think I, I'm, if if I had to pick a non, because pretty much all of them, uh, Michael Myers after that, because everybody's all aggravated. What, what is this Halloween? But I remember as a kid going to Shaw's Market. And they had their their uh, VHS uh, section where you could go. And I remember going by Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, over and over and over again. And looking at it, seeing the the three little characters, the three uh, the, the witch and the, the pumpkin and the, the um, skeleton. And, and, and walking by and going, I don't want to see that. I have, I have no no interest in seeing that whatsoever. Doesn't have uh, uh, Michael Myers in it. I, I got no interest. And then I watched it. And I kind of took it out of context of being part of the Halloween series it was it was it was different it was completely different you, you don't even they don't even talk about michael myers in it and it's it was just a, a complete different story now if if people would just stop and look at it for it just being what it is which is like a complete different story a standalone out of the franchise um i think you'll realize that it is a very interesting movie and it was really really good and it has a, a big cult cult following okay i, I know halloween does too but i mean Part three is there's some fanatics out there, okay? I own all three of the masks. I, I own the figures. I enjoyed the movie. I watch the movie every Halloween. Some people can't stand it. I enjoy it. But um, after watching Born to be Rad, he was showing all these documentaries. Now, he had one, I think it was called uh, My Name Was Heather or something. Like that. My name, no, my, na my name was Nancy. My name was Nancy. Now, that one I found out was a, um, like it was exclusive to some kind of thing. And it came with some kind of weird, thin Paper, like almost like paper thin cardboard cover, okay, and it was it was like just a disc, and they have them on eBay right now. They're autographed by uh, um by he Heather uh is it Heather Land Landcamp Land I'm, I'm gonna mess up her last name guaranteed Land 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 Camp Land Camp Land Land you know what I'm talking about uh when I play Nancy and um I I I I could have pulled the trigger on I'm like I, I'm like they didn't even put enough enough time and effort into the cover of this thing. It's not even worth me purchasing. I, I, not, not worth me buying. But then he showed this, which was actually put out by, I want to say this is a Vinegar Syndrome release. Or it's one of those Vinegar Syndrome um, companies that work with Vinegar Syndrome. And this was called Scream. Okay. Scream, My Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, so Scream. Scream wow, I'm messing this thing up. So it's, got, it's got this little cool thing that, that slides out over here. And then it's Scream. Uh, My Nightmare on Elm Street, Queen. And it's a documentary about the guy in part two who played the main character that Freddy was going after. And I guess, I, I, I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of information in this documentary that I had no idea about. Okay, number one, I, I always kind of enjoyed Nightmare on Elm Street, part three, uh, part three, part two, and I never really looked at it as it having any kind of undertones of any kind of feeling whatsoever. Um, but I guess after doing this movie, uh, the main male actor was was kind of boycotted and banned and, and attacked for for being a male scream queen. I guess this is the first this supposedly this is the first ever male scream queen. And if you watch this documentary, which this is what this is, a documentary on on his life, he wanted to um, the whole the whole moral of this whole documentary is he wanted to meet. I think it was the, either the producer. He wanted almost like not not so much an apology, but he wanted him to come out in the open and say, "Listen, I did make this so that it would be uh, um, have have something to do with uh, sexuality and uh, and he he wanted the guy to come out and say that he set him up." And that's pretty much what this this whole video is about. And I sat there through this whole thing. I will tell you, I fast forwarded quite a bit of it because there was a lot of information that was non um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, like like I wanted to, I wanted to hear about the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff. I wanted to hear about the stuff that he counted during the filming of it. I wanted to hear about the stuff that happened after the filming of it. I, that's the stuff that I was interested in. But then when it started getting into the whole 
uh, should, I, should I say politics of everything or whatever? You know, it's like, it, it, it started to get me a little bit like, I'm like, uh, I was confused. You know, I was like, I was like, are, are we still talking about Freddie here? Are we talking about this guy's personal life? Now, what this, this, this uh, actor in this thing, does it say his name? Let me, let me, let me give him a name because I'll give him a name that way. Um, I don't feel so bad. Scream Queen, da, 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 da. Mark Patton. Okay. So Mark Patton. His whole life now is just going to these conventions and signing um, Freddy memorabilia, I'm guessing. And uh, I, I guess the first thing he ever did was a play with Cher. There's a lot of information on this thing, but do was I happy with my purchase? Not really. I, I, I really didn't care. I, I reached a point in the documentary where I was like, okay, you, we could have got to the point of what's going on here. There's way too much going on in between. I want to know what you want. I I want tell tell me what you want. And let's get to the point where where, where you want to go with it. So yeah, I, I what wasn't a big fan. Okay, so um my friend um uh my my friend born to be rad. He didn't he didn't give a review on this movie. He just said that this was part of the he was showing all of his Nightmare on Elm Street collection, and and this was part of his collection. I was like, wow, I don't have that in my collection. And I kind of do like the whole uh you know slipcase with the slide thing there and uh. I probably should have known what I was what I was getting myself into. It said the, the claws are out on the back here. But yeah, that's what it's about. It's about the first ever male scream queen. And um, he wasn't very happy that he was kind of outed. And, and they he almost feel, he, he felt like he was being tricked into playing the character. And he wanted the the writer to, to come out and say, Listen, I tricked you and ruined your life. And that's what this documentary is about. So, with that said, that that's the end of that. Um, the next one, what did I just do with the... Hmm. Hang, oh, okay. The next thing that was in this box was a movie that I have never seen before. But it is in my um, list of disgusting movies. Okay, does that make sense? Like the, the horror, disgusting, like, like uh, I'll put it in the category of I Spit on, uh, I spit on Your Grave. Um... Uh, Megan is missing. What else? We what else we got up there? Where's my Where's my disgusting movie collection over there? I spit on the grave. Megan is missing. Uh, Hostel stuff like that. You know, like like the uh those um, what do they call them? Uh, tor torture torture horror movies or torture porn horror movies, whatever it is. Um, and this one is called House on the Edge of the Park. Now, I have never seen it yet. I will watch it. It's one of those uh. Uh, if I, if I'm correct, okay, this was put out by Severn Film. This is a, is this, is this a 4K? Oh, it says Blu-ray on it. It's in a black case here. So we do get a, if you look inside here, we get a Blu-ray of the movie, which is not clicked into the thing here, which does not make me happy. We get a, another Blu-ray of, oh, another, a, a separate movie of Dia, I can't even pronounce that thing. What does that say? Dia... Diado, Diado, Holocaust, De Dead, Diado, Holocaust. I have no idea what that is. And you get the House on the Edge of the Park original motion picture soundtrack. So in case you wanted to hear the motion picture soundtrack. So you get the slip cover, you get the soundtrack. And this is, I guess, the original cover art. And then this is the art for the uh, slip case. Um, out of print. I got this off of eBay. I paid twenty-seven dollars for. The, I wanted it with the slipcase. I could have got it without the slipcase for like fifteen, but I wanted the slipcase, so I spent the extra. Um, if if I'm if I'm right, so it says. Uh, three disc limited edition includes a remastered four uh, K scan, new documentary, a soundtrack. Uh, disc one has audio commentary, a whole bunch of stuff on disc one. Disc two has uh, the audio. The audio Holocaust feature film. Don't even know what that is. But it says uh, for his follow up to Cannibal Holocaust. So this was the director of Cannibal Holocaust, uh, Ruggio Diodato. So I guess the Diodato Holocaust has something to do with that. Uh, delivered a shocker packed with even more cruelly controversial 40 plus years later. It remains one of the most disturbing exploitation films of all time. David Hess of The Last House on the Left. There was another Last House on the Left. I should have said that. Because we got the we got the house house at the edge of the park. 
and uh, the last house on the left. Yeah, uh, you people need to stay away from um, last houses on the left, last houses on the park. You know, uh, house houses near the park or on the edge of the park. Anything has to do with any any house. Just just stay away. Just stay away because it's not, it's not going to end good. It's not going to end good. Um, the girl, something bad's going to happen to the girl, and then something really bad's going to happen to everybody that did something to the girl. That's that's what happens here. Um, let's see here. Last house on the left. Uh, in infamy stars. Uh, a bunch of people that I do not know. Uh, Co-stars, uh, Notorious, DPP, 39 video. Nasty from screenwriters of the New York Ripper with an unforgettable soundtrack by Riz. Yeah, I'm, I, like, like I'm going to like I'm gonna listen to the soundtrack to this movie. If you have ever seen the last... What is this, what they call this thing? How, okay, House on the Edge of the Park. Please leave your comments below. I have not watched it yet. I don't plan on throwing it in right away. I got I movies like this. I got to kind of build myself up to watching. It's just one of those things, you know what I mean? Um, Hostel, I don't have a hard time with. Hostel one, two, and three. I I, I really enjoy them. I, I think they're great. Um, uh, I spit on your grave. The newer ones, I am a lot easier to watch than the older ones. Last house on the left. Um, I prefer the older one over the newer one, but the newer one is also a lot easier to watch because it's less graphic. Some of these older type horror movies like this with the, these ones where where it's almost like it's usually has, has to do with a rapist or whatever, and the next thing you know, uh, the, the the woman actually flips the script and does some some horrific things to the to, to the, the guy or guys that that did something to her. Um, I I think I. They're, they're they're an acquired movie. They're they're kind of tough to watch, but I, I will tell you I, I I do enjoy watching the the female that that has gone through some terrible terrible situation, um, getting vengeance on some terrible terrible people. Okay, so ho hopefully not too many people are gonna knock me on the comments for that saying that uh, oh you know it's it's, it's ex exploiting this and exploiting that. Yeah, these these movies were made back in like the late seventies or early eighties or whatever, and there was a lot of crazy stuff back then. So I mean, I didn't write it. Okay, so I was whenever my wife comes, like I was watching um Death Wish, uh the first Death Wish with uh, Charles Bronson, and there's a scene in Death Wish or whatever. And my wife's she's she's laying in bed and I'm watching it or whatever, and she's she's like that's disgusting. That's just and I looked at it, I'm like I listen I didn't write this I didn't I didn't write this stuff okay I'm just watching it. It's got Charles Bronson in it. I like Charles Bronson. I like Death Wish, so I'm going to watch it. And she's like, yeah, but that, that, that scene is just terrible. I, listen, once again, I didn't write it. I'm just watching it, okay? So, yeah, I try, I try, to, I try to be solo when I'm watching these, these things there because I don't, I don't need to get the flack for, for, for a movie that I didn't even write or direct or, or produce or, or anything like that. Anyway, uh, next thing I got here is completely sealed from uh, Matuna, whatever. Matuna, Matuna, Mar 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 wow, this is a tough one. Hatuna, H A R U T Y U N. Hatun, Hatun, Mafudian, M U R A D Y A N. It's not even F in there. I don't know where I got F in there. This guy's from California. Listen, I I don't know I don't know about you there, Mister uh, Hatuyan or whatever, but yeah, he sent me something here that I needed in my collection. Okay, here we go, and it is a copy of. A copy of the Warner Brothers Archive Collection of Chris Tucker and Charlie Sheen in Money Talks. Um, this was one of my, me and my wife, date flick movies. Let me just open this up because I did get this used. I want to make sure that it's not a bootleg and make sure. Because um, for some reason, they had this on Amazon. I did not pre-order it. It was, it was like $20-something. I was like, that's a lot of money for a uh, Blu-ray. So I waited and then they sold out. And then I go on eBay, and the flippers are selling this thing for like forty, fifty dollars. And I'm like, it just came out like three days ago. How could you possibly flip something for like fifty, sixty, seventy dollars if it just came out three days ago? You haven't even given it a chance to even make it onto the market yet. You know what I mean? And you're already, you're already because because more than likely the reason why it was out of print over on Amazon or out out of stock on Amazon is because probably all the flippers grabbed every copy they possibly could, and now they're gonna go put it on eBay and they're gonna sell it for like thirty, forty, fifty dollars and make make themselves a twenty dollar or thirty dollar profit. So I waited, I waited, I waited, and I ended up getting one for I think it was seventeen dollars, which is relatively a good price for this great movie. 
Okay, great movie. Uh, um, like I said, I, I this was during me and my wife dating time. We went to uh, the two twenty five movie theater, and she was like, "I was like, what do you want to watch?" She's like, "Oh, we'll go watch Money, Money Talk because I like uh, Chris Tucker from uh, Friday, and I like Charlie Sheen." I'm like, "Okay, we'll watch a Charlie Sheen Chris Tucker movie." And I got to tell you, it was it was pretty good. Um, now I have not seen it in a long time. You know, this was this is probably about twenty five years ago or so. I do have it on a, a DVD though, but I still haven't watched it in a long time. But um. Chris Tuck is like a con man, and the other guy is, I believe he's like a straight-laced lawyer type person or whatever, and he kind of gets involved with Chris Tucker. It's one of those uh, friendship flicks. That's that's what I got to say about that. Last item I have here is from Eric uh, Mac, Mac, Erica Markham, Markham, M-A-R-C-U-M, Markham. From uh, something WV, WV, not 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 W, uh, not WB, WV. Let me see. It. All right, did I make it in? And ah, ah, this is a long-awaited title that I've been wanting to add to my collection. It is still sealed. But I have never seen this movie. I have only heard stories of this movie. I uh, Listen, almost every Blu-ray, 4K, DVD movie collector has talked about this movie in the past. It came out, it, this is a Scorpion release, so it is out of print. It came out in 1985. Um, and it is Peter Billingsley, which is the little boy from A Christmas Story, um, The Dirt Bike Kid. This could be complete cheese, or this could be my next like favorite children's type movie that I, I I missed when I was a child. I don't remember ever seeing this on like Cinemax or Showtime or, or any of those channels when I was a kid, and I lived in front of the TV. But I've heard about this movie for years and years and years, and I was like, you know what? I'm fine. I'm gonna buy it. I'm finally gonna buy it so I can watch it. I've never owned this ever on any kind of format. When I watch this, I'll be watching it for the first time ever. And we have a brand new HD uh, master from the original IP. Uh, brand new interviews with star uh, Stuart Pankin and producer Julia Corman. No, she's related to Roger Corman. Eh, possibly. Audio commentary and director Hoyt uh, Coyston and original trailer. I guess uh, Peter Billingsley didn't want to get in on this. Okay, I, I know he's doing uh, all of these um, uh, sequels of... Uh, of Christmas Story or whatever, he just did, he just wrote, produced, and acted in that last one. I think I got, which was only available on DVD. We never, never, never got a Blu-ray release, but I ended up picking it up. And I got to tell you, I watched it, and it was like it was okay, it was just okay. So I think uh, Mr. Billingsley should have did a commentary for uh, probably one of the other well-known movies that he was ever in. If you've ever seen the Dirt Bike Kid, comment below. Hey, um, watch the Dirt Bike Kid. You, you, you're really gonna enjoy it. Um, I, I picked up that movie Chomp not too long ago. C H O M P, uh, C period H period O period M period P period, which was about some kind of uh, robotic dog. I think it was. I haven't watched that yet either. I'm probably gonna put that one on the side of the robotic dog movie that I need to watch in my future. And with that said, my friend, that's it. I'm looking around. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. There's nothing else for me to show you today. And but if you could do me a favor, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button because I post every Monday. No, I don't post every Monday anymore. Wait a minute. Scratch that. Reverse it. Every Tuesday, every uh, Friday, and every Saturday, three times a week, guaranteed, unless I'm, uh, uh, unless I'm dead. When, when, when you, well, listen, if, if, if you don't see me post anymore on, on Tuesdays, uh, Fridays, or Saturdays, there's a good chance that I may no longer be alive. So with that said, my friends, please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button, because if you do that, then it helps my algorithm and everything, and then maybe I'll start making some kind of money, so that way I can support my family somehow, because... Damn. Okay, this this is just this is damn too, too too much. Too much. Too much. And with that said, my friends, thank you so much. I will see you later. You should have saved me some. Good